to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Elisa, and first I have one quick announcement. We are fully launched on the Polymer Clay Adventure Retreat. So now you can purchase it from anywhere in the world, and you get 24 classes, and lots of events, and giveaways, and all kinds of fun stuff. So head on over to polymerclayadventure.com, and you can sign up there and read more about it. So. I just want to share that with you. It's uh, ready to go. And this will officially start January 1st, 2018. But get ready, there's discussions and all kinds of things going on in there. So for today's project, we're going to do a little plaque. And these are what you're going to need, some of the things you're going to need. I'm using the magic transfer paper that was in the Celestial Create-Along kit. And we'll have these on the site as well. I'm using the silk screen that was also in the celestial kit and if you're not familiar with our kits they're they're they go out usually monthly we're not going to have one for october because we have our big paradise retreat in north carolina and we have our grand opening actually today the day that i'm filming this which is tuesday october 3rd so um but we're starting up again in november and they're basically a box filled with goodies and stuff that have a theme and this month's theme for september was celestial so i'm using some of the things that came in the box but we'll have this on the website as well on createalong.com i'm using acrylic paint to do the silk screen a squeegee for the silk screen and i've actually already silk screened onto a piece of wisteria clay to save time um i obviously you need your clay this is wisteria this is a half a bar i used right here um i'm making the wall plaque so you want it to be a little you know i'm not going for something super sized but enough so I thought half was a good half of the bars a good amount and I'm using the granite pearl or the graphite pearl excuse me not granite and that I'm going to use in the mold which are these really cute wings which are also part of the the create along kit and dewdrop ink in silver and it's called starlight silver and that was also in the kit and of course all your tools that you might have laying around your your rod your poker and blade and then I also have this which is one of our uh, cutters which they come in a pack of four and, and they're nice to do like the edges of things so I thought that would be fun I have a little star cutter um, it's a plunger cutter we have those in the shop and this is our graduated circle cutters and the reason why I use those is because when something is rounded it's some it's not always easy to get it round when you're cutting it out and I'm going to show you a tip on how to do that with the cutters and that's really about it. Oh, okay, and I have a, a few little pearls. These are freshwater pearls, which you can find anywhere. All of this is optional, and you can do whatever colors you want, but I'm actually going to do the one I'm going to show you that I've already completed, which is actually baking right now, is in red. And I'm going to show you the purple so you can get an idea of a few different colors and how it looks. So I think that's all your supplies. Get, get them together, and we'll get ready to start. So the first step is to silk screen, and with our silk screens, the orange part goes face down. And we have tons of videos on how to silk screen. It's just a matter of pulling the paint across, and you can watch those in our on our channel. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I want to have a funky edge on the bottom, and so I'm going to use these cutters across the bottom to make my cut. So I'm just going to place this cutter down and push down and get a nice firm push because what I'm trying to do is cut off this extra that's down here and now it'll leave me with a really cute scalloped edge like so. Okay? And then the edges here I just want to cut off where it seems like it's the right place to cut off that it doesn't look weird. And so I go about that far I guess and probably about the same on this side. Now, the one I'm going to show you that I did earlier was done with a different sketch, with a different, actually, I don't think I like this side over here. It kind of feels like it's a little skimpy right here, so I'm going to cut that off too. So you can do whatever feels right to you, you know, whatever looks right to you. Or This is not a really big piece we're making here. This is just like a little thing for an accent wall or whatever, or makes a really nice gift too. So I've rolled this clay out to 
probably the second setting on my pasta machine. I don't want it too thick and I don't want it too thin because you want it to, you want it to not break, so you need it to be a little thicker and you don't want it too thick so that it's big and bulky. So about a two or a three is, is good on your pasta machine and this is what it's gonna look like when you're done. And so you just wanna get that cut out and if you're working on deli paper, that's fine. I do not bake on my deli paper because I noticed that it sticks and I don't want my clay to stick so I remove it from the deli paper before I bake it. That's another tip I've, I've found out. So that's the silk screening part. It's really easy to do and like I said you can check out our many videos on it. So the next step would be to transfer your design and the design I used is right here. It's this sun and moon phase with this. I did not leave these feathers. I kind of wanted just like a straight, you know, uh, triangular pointed area. So I cut these off. So the secret to magic transfer paper is to make sure to cut as close to the lines as you can without cutting the lines, obviously. And you don't have to use the whole design. You can use bits and pieces or whatever. And that's what I did. I used bits and pieces and just cut it out with a regular scissor. And I've conditioned my clay and rolled it out to the third thickest setting on my pasta machine. This piece does not need to be very thick. It's gonna go on top of our other piece. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but one of the things you're looking for when you're using the magic transfer paper is when you pick it up, that the paper number one doesn't, doesn't buckle up from the clay. You want it to have nice adhesion to the clay. And you wanna to start to see the design leaching through the paper. So you'll see the design uh, getting the oils from the clay and then you know you're ready to go transfer it. So I'm gonna go run this under the faucet and I'll be back with the design ready to go. Okay, so I've now rinsed off the paper and you wanna make sure your design is dry. You can use an X-Acto blade or you can use your regular blade, that's up to you. However, I'm going to show you the tip that I'm talking about with using the graduated cutters. So I could come in here with my blade or an X-Acto knife and kind of round off the top. However, it never looks that neat to me. <laughs> I like my things to look a little neater and it just doesn't look that neat. So what I do is I try to find a cookie cutter that is right about the size I need. And then I use that cookie cutter to kind of bring it back around like that to get my shape. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. This one looks like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna just rock it back and forth like so, applying pressure to cut it. And so now I've got that rounded edge without you know, having to try to be exact or whatever. And then the rest I can just easily cut with my blade. So it's just a little tip I found works really well for me if I want a nice rounded edge to something. If you need to cut further, you can kind of just use the edge. And if you're doing this upside down, it may not work so great. <laughs> so you might have to do it again. But you know, you can just use, keep going over it until you get it exactly what you want. I think I'm gonna maybe taper this a little here. Right in there. And I use my blade to help shape anything that needs to be shaped. Like so. Smooth out my edges. Sounds like the piece is ready to come out of the oven. So... Just cut it until you like the shape and I will be back to put it all together. So now we're ready to put it all together and this one's come out of the oven. You probably heard the beep. I, uh, as you can see here, I did it with a more of a zigzag bottom. I've added my pearls, I added the wings and did a cute little thing with the star so that I can then hang it up and the stars are basically my hangers. So this is what the final piece is gonna look like. Well, obviously similar. <laughs> so let's start putting it together. So I, let me turn this around. I put it, that one's a little bigger as I can see now. So let's lay this about right here. I've already done my wings 
And I've done a zillion shows where we've showed how to how to mold, make mold, how to you know mold pieces and stuff. So let's just unmold them. These these are also the molds from the celestial box, and uh, they're really nice mold, really nice wings. I like these. And so they're they're silicone, so they're really easy to get out. Now, what I wanted to do is find exactly where I want to lay the wings. And so I place my piece first and then add this underneath and I'll show you why in the place where you want it. Let's see, this goes down, this should go down a little more. Okay, now you see how this sticks up? I didn't want my piece sticking up like that. So I lay my piece down and that's when you come back in with your blade and you follow the line of your, actually, I think I'm gonna go more like this let's see yeah it's hard when you work upside down okay so you want to cut you're cutting through the wing piece because what you want is for this to all lay flush together so leave that there and see if it's still if it's still not flush then you know you need to cut a little more I mean, you could take this off. You don't have to leave it on there to cut it, obviously. But for me, it's just easier because then I know exactly where I need to cut. And, and you just piece it together until it works in the space you want it. I think that's good there. Now I can lay this right in here. And it molds to the side of my piece. And I do the same on the other side. Cutting away that extra until it lays flat and pull it until I get it in the right spot. And when you have it where you think it looks right, you can start to kind of meld these pieces together a little with your finger so that it looks like it's not a whole bunch of separate pieces. And you can use a knitting needle if that helps you, whatever, whatever works for you to get it smooth. If your wings need, need to be cleaned up a little, make sure to do that as well. Sometimes the mold will leave a little extra. And then when you think you have it all ready to go there, that's when you come back in with your ink and you want to highlight the wings. And I just use the tip of my finger to do that. You don't need very much. This ink is really juicy. And this is the Sukaneko brand. Um, now it's actually, I believe they're called Imagine Crafts. And so just a little goes a long way and I'm just, lightly touching the top to highlight all the wings or all the feathers on the wing. And that looks really cute. So that's all there is to it. And then I wanted a little extra touch with the uh, pearls. I thought they were really pretty um, and I had them. So I figured why not? You don't need a lot of this extra clay and I'm going in the same color that I did the, the transfer in because I'm just going to add to it a little. And I might do this a little differently since it ended up laying out a little differently. This was a little bit bigger than this piece. So you just want to roll out a snake. Obviously your clay has to be conditioned. And uh, I probably have way more than I need. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know I do. So just roll out your snake to whatever size you want it, but it has to be big enough, obviously, to embed your pearls. So let me talk about that for a second, embedding pearls or, or stones or whatever. I like to embed them while it's, the clay is raw, and then depending on how well they stick, I will oftentimes pull them right out and then glue them in. So to me, I feel like that's the best way to get your, your pieces to stay permanently um, you know a lot of times they will stay without even actually using any glue however you know if you're gonna sell something or or give it as a gift you don't want it falling you don't want it falling apart period so that that gluing it gives you that extra stability and so I just pieced my my snake around as you can see here and that gives me a place where I can now insert my pearls in any way I want and I think I'm going to go with these little darker ones. I really like those ones. They're so shimmery. And 
And you can place them wherever you want. I uh, tried to not make the holes so visible because these are actually beads. And just give them a nice push. I might have made the hole <laughs> on that one noticeable, but it's all right. They're so small, it's kind of hard to, to, you know, see anyways. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And so you just place your pearls wherever you want. And, and after, after it's done baking, I would suggest, like I said, pulling these pearls out and putting them back in with a little weld bond glue or something like that. Um, weld bond works really well uh, to adhere things with polymer clay. And all in all, it's a, it's a, it's a good glue. So, you know might want to give that one a try and with weld bond you can actually bake it in the oven too so you could put the glue on before you even do this put a little dab there and then push your pearls in but I prefer to pull it out and then I know for sure that it's going to get a good adhesion and there you have it now we just have to add one little last thing and that's our little stars you don't have to use a star cutter you could use a circle cutter you could do it with a knitting needle whatever you want but I thought the stars gave it that added extra, you know, to where I can hang it. Now, you don't want to go too close to the edge because if you do, you, you run the chance of it breaking. So I'm coming in a little from the edge. You can always use these little stars for some other project. And just giving them a little poke. And there you have it. And all you have to do is string it up at this point any way you like. Which... I'm not going to do at the moment because I have to find the right um, string, but maybe some sorry string would look nice. But there it is, super cute, two different colors. This one's got blue and red, this one's got purple and pink, and really just a neat idea for someone that's into celestial things or, or fun items like this. So I hope you'll uh, have fun with this project and you can share anything you make with us at polymerclaytribe.com that's our facebook group we have thousands and thousands of people in there and everybody's so open to share and we'd love to have you join us if you haven't already and don't forget polymerclayadventure.com if you want to join the retreat it's all inclusive so you get all the classes for just one low price um and if you happen to be in florida or in the surrounding areas come see us at thingscrafty.com that's our brand new creative center and we'll have lots of polymer clay classes there for sure. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.